Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today we're going to tackle a 3D print. This is from June 2021, the D-Day pack from Anvil Industry. Now it's available on their Patreon at the moment. Uh, you can go along, sign up for that, pick up the STL files. It is a huge pack. Uh, if you happen to be watching this a little bit later though, you'll be able to go and pick those up from their website. Now this fella here, he could be just about, you know, any old American captain, but... <laughs> Uh, I had a lot of fun painting this fellow. It was really interesting to do something a little outside of my usual wheelhouse. But you'll probably notice that he doesn't look exactly like he does in the promotional shots, in that for those he's normally got a gas mask. What I've actually done is taken advantage of Anvil's what they call multiple shells, where you can select and remove certain parts of a model before even printing it. In this case, a bat and his helmet. So I'm going to show you how to do that using a little bit of screen capture. As always, all of the paint stuff will be listed in the description below. Let's get started. Now to begin with, I'm using a program called Mesh Mixer. Uh, this one is free. You can also use Blender. And the fellas at Anvil have made sure that there is a tutorial available at the end of their Light Mech video if you want to know how to do this using Blender. I'm using Mesh Mixer because I find it just a little bit more user friendly. To start off with, when you open your program, this is what you're going to see. And we want to first of all import our captain. And easy as that, this is what you'll end up with. Now what we want to do is straight away just click edit. And we want to separate shells, which is right here. Click that. And you'll see now that we get this list of objects that are in the scene. So if I were to either click any of these names, or if I just click an object, we see that it lights up. All I got to do here, I tap delete and that's gone. So I'm going to spin them around and also select the bat and delete that. Now you'll notice that the support structures that the guys at Anvil have put together for us, they do point now to section of a bat that isn't there and we can't just get rid of the whole thing. Um, it's a small price to pay in resin. <laughs> what we want to do now is to export this as one item again. So I'm going to click the top item, hold down shift, and click the bottom to select them all. Now luckily, that straight away comes up into the top here with this uh, series of options. I'm going to click combine. Now funky colors aside, that is one object again. All we got to do now is go to file, export, and you'll see down the bottom here that it's telling us it's going to export as an STL already. Uh, if it says it's non-manifold, don't worry about that. Just hit continue. And then you can go ahead and open this file in whatever program you're using to slice your STL files for printing. Easy as that. So once he's printed, cleaned up and assembled, this is what you'll have. I've gone ahead and primed him with a spray of leather brown because it's going to work really well for pretty much all of the colors we're going to put over the top of it. Now to start with, we're going to start from the very deepest areas that are going to be difficult for us to hit with the brush later on. So we're actually going to start with his skin. Reason being, if we make a mistake and we sort of splurge onto his jacket or his, his shirt or whatever, we're going to paint those in a couple of minutes anyway. So this is tanned flesh. And as you can see, I've thinned that with just a little bit of water. So it's a little bit translucent. But we're not too worried about that because we can come back and give that a second coat. Now after a couple of coats, you'll have a nice solid color like that. Now what I'm going to use is Venom Worm, and this is for the green detail on his, on his clothing. And there's two areas that you want to paint with this. First of all, his trousers, which are the sort of dark green, later war, let's say, American kit. And then up here, uh, you see there's this little shield section on his chest, but I'm going to quite messily just go over Pretty much all of that and i'm going to make sure that i've got his shirt you know shirt collar close to his skin so as you see i'm not fussed if i hit his jacket because we're going to tidy that up later and it's far easier than trying to dodge <laughs> this section of green now venom worm with all the love in the world doesn't cover perfectly so you will find that once you've applied one coat you're going to need to come back and give it a second just to solidify that color now once you've got a nice solid green, you can move on. I've got here some ultramarine blue, and I've watered it down just a little bit, same as with all the other colors. And I'm going to paint in, well, again, 
fairly sloppily. This region on his chest, which has got the blue shield and the star. I'm also going to paint in the, I'm guessing these are sort of armor plates on his knees. And I'm also going to give his shield its first color. So I'm going to do blue on the inside, red towards the outer edge, and the star will stay white. So you'll see this is going to need two coats. Uh, my poor camera <laughs> cannot handle so much white on the screen at once. But as with everything, we'll come back, make sure this color's nice and solid. Now I'd almost forgotten that he has a nice blue helmet, so don't forget that like I did. I'm going to use now Banshee Brown, and I'm going to paint in his gaiters. Uh, you could, if you wanted to, also use this to paint in his uh, webbing and equipment. Now, it may surprise you to learn that there's a film out there with a, uh, an American captain, and it's kind of a titular character. And in that film, he has uh, leather webbing, like all of his pouches and what have you. If you wanted to, of course, you could paint that to, you know, to match that American captain. Uh, but you, you don't have to. I'm going to stick to a slightly more realistic color scheme for this completely made up dude. <laughs> but as always, it's your miniature and uh, you're not bound by reality when it comes to something like this. Now that is going to seem quite light, uh, like crazy so when you first put it on. But remember, we are going to balance it visually with some of the white details that will go on later. And we're going to shade it, so don't worry too much. I've got here, this is Crusted Saw, and this is just one of my favorite colors in the Army Painter range. It's this really deep red, almost a purple, and it's got a sort of brownish you know, tone to it. So for our captain's dark red leather gloves, that will do perfectly. Now while that's drying, we can move on, and I've got here Army Green. We're going to apply this to his webbing. Now, again, in reality, this probably wouldn't have been quite so green, but we're looking for it to really contrast with the rest of the color scheme so far. As with everything else, this is likely to need two coats. So once you've done the one, let it dry, and you can come back and touch it up. Now, to dip back briefly to the shield, when I was applying the crusted sword of the gloves, I also did a quick rip round on the outside of the shield, because that's where I'm going to put the red. Now, I've done that because pure red that I'm using here doesn't cover particularly well. Um, much as I'd love that if it did, we've got a bit of work to do here. So you're probably going to find this needs two, maybe even three coats, if you want a really solid color. Uh, but it is going to be worth it. So take your time. Make sure that you are letting each uh, coat dry thoroughly before you apply another. Maybe put the kettle on. Now at last we can move on. With that red laid down, we can actually touch up the white. Now for this I'm going to start instead with Spaceship Exterior. Uh, reason being is if we paint straight white, it's going to take us a lot longer to get a solid color. So I'm going to tidy this up first of all with Spaceship Exterior, and then when we've shaded it, we'll be able to highlight with white and it will look very cool. Uh, this will also go on a bit smoother than pure white will. Um, and it's way easier to do when you haven't got the camera there, as I always mentioned, so... <laughs> and then on the captain himself, switch on down to a smaller layer brush, and I'm going to apply this to, well, the white areas. Actually, if I flip them upside down here, it'll probably be a little easier to get at that bit of... star. Now there you have it, white but not white, and it's much easier than painting pure white straight from the pot. Now it's up to you if you want to keep his leather jacket as leather brown, the same as the primer we used. But I'm going to use instead here Dirt Spatter, which is a slightly richer, more vibrant brown. It's got a little bit of warmth to it that I really like. So what I'm going to do is paint in his jacket, and I'm going to use this essentially as a tidy up stage. So anywhere that there's little splatches of blue or what have you, I can now carefully go back over with dirt spatter and then fill in the rest of his jacket. So we'll come back once we've given that a quick coat. 
Now I do think that's enough of a difference from Leather Brown to be worthwhile in doing. As you see, it's slightly richer and darker. I like that. I am going to use Leather Brown all the same though, and I'm just going to touch up the strap around his helmet. Some werewolf fur to fill in the fronts and backs of his boots, trying not to hit the gaiters. Then some fur brown to do the wood on his Thompson. Now this is really a matter of personal choice. I just think it looks nice as kind of a polished, looked after wood color, but you can use anything you like here. Just a tiny wee blob of Crypt Wraith to fill in the grenade on his back here. You could just do this black if you wanted. You, know, you don't have to worry too much about a whole green color just for one grenade, but I find Crypt Wraith useful for lots of stuff. And then finally for our base coats, some black. Now I always leave my cleanup stage until the last steps of finishing off the base coats. So I've gone back and I have touched up the Venom Worm in a couple of places where I hit his trousers and one or two spots on his back. But otherwise, leave that to last because it will save you time. We're going to shade him now and I've got here my bottle of one-to-one -one Strong Tone to Quick Shade Mixing Medium. Uh, this stuff, you know, I was using so much of it and mixing it on my palette that it dawned on me, wait, just get a big bottle. So <laughs> I did. So I've got some of that out onto a palette sheet. Um, you can use any sort of non-porous material, something like an old plate will work really well for this. Uh, I tend to find you don't want to use a wet palette with your shades though, just in case it thins it out a little bit more than you might need. So I've got here a, this is a size 2 equivalent brush. And we're just going to apply this mix all over the whole miniature. You want to make sure that you are working it into the recesses. But anywhere that it collects, you know, a huge amount, like on a sleeve there, just work it around and move it into recesses and areas of detail that you want this shade to really accentuate. Then when you've done that, you can leave it for about 30 to 40 minutes, depending on how sunny the day is. And we'll get a look at what that looks like when that's dry. Now remember as well, he has got that shield, so you're going to want to do the same thing to this. Now isn't that just magic? <laughs> I love that stuff. It takes half the work out of it for you. What I'm going to do now is some edge highlights, and this can seem a little daunting, uh, especially if you've got, you know, unsteady hands. But I'm going to show you something in a bit which will help if you have trouble drawing a single straight line. What I'm going to do is go through each of the colors in turn fairly quickly, um, and I'm not going to highlight every single color. So we'll start off first of all with some monster brown. And we'll lightly pick out some of the details of his jacket. Now on his lapel here, uh, I actually didn't do this on purpose. My hand genuinely slipped and I put on way more monster brown than I wanted. So that fix I mentioned is just to go back to your base color. So in this case, dirt spatter. And I've thinned this down just a little bit more than I usually would. And I'm going to use it to basically get rid of the excess highlight. Now that'll dry maybe a little sharper than it looks. And if I need to, I can touch it up again with some Monster Brown. So there you have it. Don't worry too much if you can't keep a straight line with your brush. You're not completely out of the game as far as edge highlighting goes. So I will now skip ahead you know, carry on doing those uh, highlights with the other colors. So I've got here scaly green, and I'm going to use this on his webbing. Now we'll use necrotic flesh for the uh, trousers and his shirt. Now this is quite a significant jump in color. Uh, it'll certainly look worse on the pot <laughs> than it is in reality. But once you apply a little bit of this and it darkens out, it's going to look way more reasonable. We'll use electric blue to lighten up, funnily enough, those blue areas. Now for the star on the shield, I'm briefly going to go back to Starship Exterior. Um, I'm not going to do this on the knee pads and on his chest because I don't think it's going to need it. But a big white area like this, I do want to brighten it up a bit. So first of all, this. And then to pure matte white to apply those highlights where you actually want them. Now Mars Red is going to seem likewise really bright going on, but once it uh, 
dries down a little, it's going to look fine. Just dip your rivets in there too. And then from here, we'll highlight his face first of all with Barbarian Flesh, leaving just the dark recesses behind. And then just a couple of tiny wee splashes of Corpse Pale, just along his cheekbones, the very tip of his nose, now then, the final detail that I'm actually going to highlight is the gun itself, and I'm going to use a tiny wee bit of gun metal for this, just along the edges of the weapon. Then what I'm going to do is to hit this and the shield both with a matte varnish. So I'm going to finish this off, and then I'm going to go spray those outside, bring them back, show you what that looks like. Now doesn't that matte varnish just make a world of difference? What we need to do now is apply a little bit of super glue to his shield. So let's just get the back there. You see, I haven't been terribly careful about how it was painted. But just a wee dot of super glue into the hand grip as soon as this behaves with me. And then we can apply that over the back of his wrist with a couple of seconds of wiggle room. There we go. Now all that remains is to put a quick base on him. You'll notice that there is this little section of rock here that I haven't actually painted at all, and that's because when I base him, that's going to disappear. You could also, if you were braver than I am, paint an A on his helmet for, I don't know, maybe he's a captain from America, for example. Uh, or if you want an easier way of doing something cool up there, grab yourself some uh, decals for 15 millimeter Sherman tanks. And that'll fit super well, just a star in the center of his helmet there. Job done. Anyhow, let's get a look at what he looks like on the little spinny thing. So there we have it. Our brave American captain is complete, and he was a lot of fun. Something really outside what I would usually do. One of the things I really like about sharing hobby stuff online, uh, particularly on Twitter and Facebook, is getting ideas from people. And when I posted sort of the, uh, the print of this fella, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with him. Um, I was just going to paint him and then put him in a box, you know. But somebody mentioned, well, why not use him as the leader of a Paragon squad for Conflict 47? And I thought, well, gee, that's a really good idea. So I'm going to paint another couple of fellas in this sort of style to match him up. And even if he's a little bit beefier than the Warlord Plastic Infantry, cool. You know, that suits just perfectly. So as always, thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of the patrons who are keeping me ticking in paint and glue, including producers Alan Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Trainboy, and Fred. Your support is invaluable, folks. Any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comments box below, and I will make sure that the Anvil Industry Patreon is, of course, linked down there too, so you can find these files for yourself. So, thank you very much for your time, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.